Well, hello there, and here we are today. We're going to learn about ancient Egyptian boats. And I just wanted to say thank you so much to everybody who responded to the question that I put out on Facebook and Instagram on what you wanted to learn how to draw or what your kids would like to learn how to draw because um, if you guys didn't choose the Egyptian boats, I probably would have never learned so much about the Egyptian boats. And so um, I just have a couple of books that I got from the library that I would recommend maybe checking out. This is called Pharaoh's Boat and it's all about a boat that was found hidden inside of a, a pyramid um, not too long ago actually. And there's actually um, a video on Amazon Prime and it's a series called Secrets of the Deep and it's called Ancient Egyptian Boats and it talks about a boat that was found inside of a pyramid. But then there's some other, you know, there's tons and tons of books about ancient Egypt. So these are just a few that I use to go research um, some information about boats. And then I also included with this little free lesson, um, 30 days of Egyptian drawing. So if you want to take this a little bit further and you need some ideas on what to draw for ancient Egypt, here are some ideas for you. And then of course, because I always have to include some sort of art history because I love it. Um, I made some art appreciation questions for you guys and I have some images of boats and pyramids and pharaohs and all sorts of things that you can look at. And they're all on the website um, at www.yellowspotsun.com. And you just go to Ancient Egyptian Boats lesson to find it and you can download all these resources. So you go ahead and grab all of your supplies that you're going to need. You're going to need a piece of paper to draw on. I've got a piece of cardstock. If you want a piece of drawing paper or computer paper or whatever you've got handy, go ahead and do that. You can gra also grab a pencil. I, of course, will be using my fine point Sharpie pen so that you can see it up there on the screen. And then come on back and we will get started drawing this fun Egyptian boat. All right, before we actually draw though, I just wanted to point out a few images of ancient Egyptian drawings either on a tomb or on some sort of like papyrus or something um, that have been found. And I wanted to just show you some of these because uh, as I was talking with my own kids about it, we just saw a couple of things. And I wanted to first look at the shape of the boat. And when we started looking at the shape of the boat, what cam comes to mind? Well, for us, it was a banana. So we're like, banana! And we see a banana shape in this boat. And so we're, of course, seeing a banana shape. But then we notice a couple of other things. There's this box sort of thing here. There's lots of people with oars. There's a big oar over here. You can see big oars here pushing these boats. Now this boat actually has a sail and what I found out, um, well first let me back it up just a little bit. So when I first think about ancient Egypt, boats aren't the first thing that come to mind. As a matter of fact, I don't know that I've ever really associated boats with ancient Egypt because when I think of ancient Egypt, I think of the desert, I think of pyramids, I think of, um, you know, just anything like camels, snakes, I think of things that are associated with the desert and hot and, and the hot blazing sun. Um, so the boats never really crossed my mind, although I do know that the pyramids are right by the Nile River and the Nile River flows into the Mediterranean Sea and there's a big delta close to the Mediterranean Sea. So I knew all this, but boats just never came to mind. So when I was looking up information about boats, I found out that boats were first created, um, or the ancient Egyptians first created their boats using papyrus or dried papyrus reeds. And they would let those dry out and then they would weave them together and create these boats. And then as time went on, they started getting um, cedar from Lebanon, which um, that's a very popular thing. And I learned more about the cedars from Lebanon as I studied this. And then um, they never had nails because nails weren't invented back then. So they, they had to find a different way to connect those pieces of wood. And then, you know, like you just think about, we take all of our modern conveniences for granted sometimes, but they didn't have the tools and the resources that we had or that we have back then. And so the way they constructed their boats were completely different than the way we construct our boats now. And the sails didn't come until much, much later when they finally realized that the wind would help them uh, maneuver the Nile River when they were trying to go in the opposite direction of the stream. Um, and so, you know, I just learned all these great things. So thank you so much for wanting to draw this boat. Now, enough of the history. Let's get to our fun drawing. 
All right, I think you can see the boat if I put it off to the side right there. So remember I said that the first thing that we saw, my family and I saw when we were looking at the boats was the shape of a banana. Well, that must have been stuck in my head because when I went to color it, I colored it yellow. So <laughs> anyway, um, here's my ancient Egyptian boat. Now where we're going to draw, it's a very simple shape. Okay, we're gonna draw some two guide points on our paper first. So we're gonna put one point here and one point there. So you've got two guide points. And then what happens is, is that you've got diagonal lines, a straight line, and then a di another diagonal line. So let's draw that first. Diagonal, straight, another diagonal. And it's okay if I didn't make it right up there to that point. Um, all right, so now we've got that basic shape. Now what can we add to it? Well, they had something for their or right here. So this looks, sort of looks like a little V shape and then they in later boats which aren't always included in every single boat because you know some pe boats were made for pharaohs who had a lot of money and so their boats were more decorated or more ornate but they had this horn shape that kind of came up so let's draw this v shape first over here so what we're going to do is we're going to sort of do this first okay and we're going to bring this around, but when we bring it around, we're going to arch all the way up. Okay, so maybe you wanna watch me first and then do it. So I'm going to slowly come all the way like this. And then I'm going to arch it up, just like that. Okay, so it curves up just a little bit. Now, let's finish this part or you can't really, I'm sorry, you couldn't see that in the in the video. So let's finish this part right here where it sort of creates this Y, but we're gonna curve it out just a little bit and I may have to go back and curve this just a little bit. So curve like this and I'm gonna curve, go back and curve this. Now you have a pencil so you'll be able to erase those lines. It's okay for me with this right here. Now let's look at this horn shape right here. So at the end of my curve line over here, I'm going to draw an oval shape like this. And then I want the horn to come back down, out, and around. So if I don't think that that is narrow enough, I can always go back in and change it, right? And then I'm going to come Just like that. Now, if I think that is too thin right here, what do I do? Well, I go back in and I work on it. So I'm gonna turn it just a little bit this way, upside down, because it's easier for me to work like this. So I'm going to go back over, and sort of arch it a little bit more that way. Okay, now at home, you can erase this with your pencil if you don't like that. Um, but I'm using a pen and I'm perfectly fine with it looking just like that for right now. So there you go, you got the basic shape for your boat. Now comes the fun part of adding all the details and we're going to add the stick for the oar at the end. Now the second runner up in the um, Facebook and Instagram post was a winged scarab. And I thought it would be fun to incorporate a winged scarab onto our boat and a couple of other fun things like the eye of Horus and a lotus flower design. I thought those things would be fun to incorporate. Now you can add and decorate your boat any way you like. Now remember, Back in ancient Egyptian times, they couldn't go to their local Lowe's to buy paints or materials, um, or they couldn't go to a craft store and buy whatever they needed or order anything off of Amazon, because none of that existed back then. So they had to create every sort of paint, every sort of um, paint brush, uh, anything that they were using to decorate. And, and their reason for decorating was completely different than what our reason is now. now um, they weren't creating art to be displayed in a museum. They weren't creating art. Um, they, they, were, they were just simply, these symbols that they used had meaning and they were very um, superstitious and everything that they used had a meaning and so they thought that their symbols would save them or protect them. So the Eye of Horus, what, go look in, up what that represents. Or the Winged Scarab, go look up what that represents. Or the Lotus Flower, okay? These, these symbols all represented something. So when they displayed it on their items that they had, whether it was their jars or their boats or whatever it was that they had, it was for a specific reason, not just for decoration. But it does end up looking beautiful. So 
we're just gonna have fun with it. We're not doing it for any other reason other than it's interesting and fun to draw these um, symbols and shapes. So let's look at the wing scarab. And on the inside here, we're going to start with an oval, okay? So very carefully draw your oval. And if you can't get the shape right the first time or you don't like the way it looks, what do you do? Well, pause the video, go back over and draw it a couple of times until you like it. Now remember, if you're pushing hard with your pencil and you go to erase something, you're going to have a very hard time erasing those lines. So don't push hard with your pencils, okay? All right, so now let's look at the shape of these wings. So we've got two horizontal lines that come out and then they sort of curve in and then vertical lines going up. So let's make a horizontal line this way. And we'll make another horizontal line this way, okay? Now I'm going to make my vertical lines coming down so I know where to stop. And then I'm just going to make a curved line connecting those two pieces right there. And if you need to move your paper around because it's easier, you can. Now when I step back and look at that, they're not perfectly even, they're not perfectly symmetrical, and I'm okay with that, but if I wanted to and I say, hmm, I, I want this to be a little bit bigger right here, well, I'd go back in and draw a second line right there. But for the sake of the video, I'm gonna leave it just like that for right now. Now, you can do whatever sort of design you'd like on the inside here. I'm simply going to keep it similar to this, where I'm, I'm gonna have one, two, and I'm gonna make my little guidelines or guide points right there so I know where I'm going to make my curve lines. So one, two, and I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So I've got two points and then up here and up here. So one, two. So I've got some curved lines and then I wanted some angled lines or diagonal lines. So from here, I can just do straight, I'm just gonna keep it simple and make straight lines all the way through. I stopped and made individual lines in each of these, but I'm just gonna simplify it just a little bit. So it almost looks like rays of the sun coming out. There's that, and then for this side, I need to turn this a little bit. Diagonal line. There we go, so I've got those simple shapes inside of the wings. Now the shape of the beetle, um, super easy. Okay, well, I'm gonna start in the center part here and make curved lines, two curved lines right here, and straight, and then straight. All right, now that gives me a space for the head. So straight line first, curved line, and then down here for the, I don't know, I guess the bottom part of the bug. I'm gonna make my vertical lines first that are parallel, then horizontal on the top, and guess what? It's curved everywhere else. So curve line and curve line. And at any time you need to stop this or pause this because I'm going too fast, you go right ahead and do that. All right, so now we've got the basics from here, okay? Um, we can add an eye of Horus, you can add a lotus flower, you can add any sort of designs and shapes that you want for the rest of the boat. Um, we'll come back to that in just a second, but let me show you how to add this oar stand right here. All right, the first thing we're going to do is draw two parallel lines that are vertical, okay? So watch what I do first. One line here, one line here, okay? Now I want to um, make somewhat of a little divot in here, so I'm going to make shape like this on the inside. Now the All next thing I want to do, I want to have some guide points so that I can have this correct angle for my oar. So I'm taking my pen and I see that I want my oar to go in this direction so it can touch both this section and this section. So what I want to do is put a point here and here and then if I look it's going to sort of come about right there too. So that gives me an idea of how I, I need to draw my lines. Now, with you guys at home with a pencil, you can just very lightly draw your line going all the way through right here. But I, I have a pen. I'm gonna draw it all the way through anyway just so you can see it, but what you don't want is for your line. See how this part comes 
right here and the the ore looks like it's going through this section right here so you don't want your pencil line to come all the way through here otherwise it won't give the right effect so and the same thing right here so this should be solid and this should be solid because those are in the front and then you're going to draw your line below behind that so let me show you what i'm doing so i'm going to draw going like this i'm going to stop right there but you can continue your line because you can erase it and then coming all the way through this like that so i kind of have that angle and then down here because i stopped right there i want this to continue going in that same angle so i'm going to sort of go just like that do you see what i've done okay so now i'm going to make parallel lines but let's connect it right there follow gently i'm stopping right there so see it's coming through this point stopping right there and then right here going through that part stopping and coming back again okay do you see what i've done now this takes a little bit of practice but you can get it and then we want this to look somewhat like an ore down here so it's going to come into the water I'm going to flare out just a little bit okay you can make your ore however whatever shape you like now we've got the basics for our fun Egyptian boat. If you want to add any sort of details, any sort of a, anything, really, it does not have to look like mine. Now I just went and I drew, you know, parallel lines over here and here with some circles. So if you'd like, I can show you real quick how to draw this eye of Horus in this lotus blossom. So I'm just going to do it down here on the bottom of my paper. You wouldn't want to do this, but. I mean on the bottom of your paper you can practice on another sheet of paper but I'm just going to show you right here now to look at your eye of Horus first thing you're going to want to do is draw two curved lines that meet like this okay and then you've got your circle for the eye on the inside so that gives you the shape now I'm going to make my eye of Horus go this direction so I'm looking at just this one right here so what I would do, I'm going to carefully follow that curve and then come down and stop. And then I'm going to follow that curve, come over and stop. Okay, so that gives me my shape and then there's an eyebrow, right? So that follows it. So I'm going to start right here, curve and it stops right at the same spot. And then I just follow that right back up. And then I would color all of that in black. So that's that's the way that you could draw it. And then of course, if you look at um, other images, there's a piece that comes down right here and it sort of curves. So if you wanna get fancy, I just didn't have space on mine, so I didn't add all that. Um, if you wanna get fancy, you can, you can add all that. Now let's look at this lotus blossom. I'm gonna bring this over just a little bit so you can see. Super, super easy. Okay, their lotus blossom, I'm going to start in the center here, right here, which you may not be able to see, but it's almost like drawing the eye of Horus in a different direction. So I start with that petal, and then from here, I'm going to come up, go over and around, go up, over and around. Okay, that's just the basic shape. And then in here, one, two, we got those pieces, and one, two, three, four, okay? And then it's got this bottom piece, and there you have it. So there's your lotus blossom, all right? So again, have fun with this. When you color, I'm going to show you real quick what to do with markers so that you don't make it messy. Okay, when you use your marker, a lot of times people, kids, adults, all sorts of people, We'll use their markers like crayons. And guess what? When you use your marker like a crayon, it starts to look messy and sloppy, right? Well, this is going to be a little bit time consuming, but when you create art, you want to spend some time with it so you have nice, neat craftsmanship. So when you go to use a marker, instead of scribbling back and forth like you do with a crayon, you're going to want to take a shape like this and you just kind of follow that line and you go in one direction. 
all the way through, okay? So you're just sort of going in one direction. Now see, now these are not your typical Crayola markers. These are my Tombow, they're my special markers that I use, but notice that any marker, when you have the fat tip marker and you're coloring in a big section, you wanna use the edge right here, not the tip of the marker, but the edge so that you can cover more space. Now if I were to go like this, look at that. I'd have all those little itty bitty teeny tiny lines all over the place. So just nice and slow, nice and neat. One direction, if you need to move your paper, move it around, but just go slow with it. The markers look nice and neat. You can color this with anything, crayons, pastels, colored pencils, nice and slow, nice and neat. And I would love to see your drawings when you are all done. All right, have fun, bye-bye.